Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the Doom Kennedy Aquatic Centre. As the uh, combatants are facing off, it is your Clarence Crocs v Sandy Bay Blue. Just going through the teams here, and it's a fantastic lineup for Sandy Bay. Number one, Harry Fisher. Number two, Hunter Wright. Number three, Theo Ives. Number four, Andrew Hudson. Number six, Josh Wiley. Seven, Julian Hudson. Number eight, Jackson Devine. Number nine, Alex Continenza. Number 10, Shark Stevenson. 12, Mitchell Bennett. Uh, 13, Scott Wilson, and coached by Dean Wright. Crocs, number one, Seamus Sutton. Number two, Fergus Cameron Sharp. Number four, James Foster. Five, Matthew Costello. Seven, Tom Franks. Eight, Alistair Habday. Nine, Joseph McCullum. Ten, Alex Hay. Eleven, Stuart Robbins. And twelve, uh, Nathaniel Simmons. Nathaniel Simmons and coach Nathaniel Simmons as well as the players you can see on screen about to face off and uh, shake hands as they come through and greet the uh, referees. Ladies and gentlemen, it is great privilege. It is uh, Andrew Hopwood for Duff TV bringing you the grand final of the water polo, the uh, relevant drug testing solutions Hobart water polo competition. And uh, it all comes down to this. The last two teams, it's been a very good season uh, the Clarence Crocs would have to go in favourites, one would have thought, uh, as Sandy Bay Blue have been very, very close but haven't quite got the chocolates. Um, but I've got inside information from someone who know. I had a great chat to one of the stars for the Clarence Crocs, young Tom Franks, who has represented Australia country in the men's competition. And he tells me it's going to be a very, very hotly contested game. So the players now just... Uh, going over for that last minute attention from coach Wright, as you can see, Sandy Bay Blue, whereas uh, Clarence Crocs have gone for the uh, traditional, just a couple of shots and passes ready for the big game. It's a good crowd here at the Dude Kennedy Aquatic Centre and uh, much expectation there was, uh, as I came over the bridge, I was there earlier at the Clarence uh, War Memorial Pool to see the Crocs train uh, they had a light training, they uh, went out for a meal and they've all gathered here tonight in readiness for this very, very big grand final. Uh, we hope you enjoy the coverage. Uh, it's been a fantastic night so far. We started with the uh, under-12 mix, then went into the uh, 14, 16 and 18. It's great to see the young kiddies of Hobart uh, getting out and being fit and playing in the water polo. Very finely tuned athletes playing this game. Uh, it's very, very hard on the fitness, and uh, that's why we're seeing uh, at least a dozen players as there are six plus the keeper on at any one time, and uh, you'll see throughout the coverage, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, interchange that comes on. Uh, you go out, you go hard. It's very physical game, as you'll see for the uninitiated. Uh, a lot goes under the water. It's like watching a duck swim. They seem nice and calm, but by gee, those legs are working very, very hard as the referees are just about ready to go for the first swim off here. As we'll see the selected two go hard. Frank for the Crocs is swimming very quickly as he's just about to get to it. It was very closely contested, but he, he's just able to get to the first ball. And the Crocs set up for the offense in the first attack in the 2019 grand final. That's a, a bounce shot there by Foster that's just gone a little bit too high over the top of Fisher, who sees it goes wide as uh, Sandy Bay Blue now through the agency of Hudson passes in towards the centre forward. That's a good shot. It's hit the post. Gee whiz. Uh, I thought he had Sutton beaten for all money there and only the woodwork kept it out. So the Crocs... Again, taking time up from the pool. Nice lob into that position. Good defensive work, and that's a very good turnover. Nicely played there by Hudson. Hudson goes further out towards Barnett. Really good offensive play here. It was quick transition here by uh, Sandy Bay, and they're almost going to have the shot. Feigning does the blind turn, and a shot there. And it's... Uh, Put in there by uh, Hudson for a goal. 
and Sandy Bay are up and about early in the grand final as uh, the Crocs are just going to try and settle this one down as here they go a penalty in play as they're just moving that ball, ball up into the centre now they've gone in 22 seconds on the shot clock passes back Costello back to Franks Franks very aggressive player and the shot is wide very powerful on that right forehand there and Sandy Bay to take possession of the ball again very diligent in their setup just taking their time now good set plays you can see a couple of good swim throughs there by Josh Wiley trying to draw the best defender as that's great possession there's a lot of pressure on there as Cameron Sharp was under that pressure and the goal has been scored by Wright and uh, the young man who's represented Australia in the underage in fact this year traveled to Serbia to further his career has uh, put that one through so now the Crocs are moving up and they have uh, take possession of the ball to the agency of Franks gets it back to captain coach Simmons just trying to steady the ship now another pass back very powerful player is Simmons very experienced campaigner gets the shot and uh, that ball has been again stopped great play by Sandy Bay they'll be growing in confidence now as another quick penalty their transition has been very very good at this stage another pass back over there to Barnett Barnett back to Hudson succession of uh, Plays trying to draw the foul at centre forward, but the Wiley Simmons was just able to tip that one out in the grand final with uh, three and a half minutes left in the first quarter. We're seeing Sandy Bay uh, doing all the better quality attacking. And at this stage, uh, the Crocs just haven't settled into this grand final. Pressure can do funny things, but they're a quality outfit. They've got some magnificent players on board. You can see Frank's just trying to force the foul as he pushes in there and he has done so and so now Franks goes the shimmy to try and get it into the centre forward again uh, drawing another foul was Hay goes back to Franks lobs it in now to a very dangerous position hand on top of the ball and the, it's been a turnover and a tremendous quarter so far here by Sandy Bay in the 2019 Grand Final for the Relevant Drug Solutions uh, Water Polo Tournament here. Coming over the top, a little bit amorous there is Hobday, who's been penalised. They don't muck around to Sandy Bay. Quick transition, gets it back in towards right. He's the danger man as far as Sandy Bay, trying to draw the foul. He does, he has a shot. But a good save uh, there by, by Sutton. Good extension by Sutton, very strong in the legs and through the core to be able to get up that high to stop that ball. So now it is the Crocs trying to set up through Franks, gets it out to McMullen, another young fella who, of course, has played for Australia. It's gone the backhand, shot on goal, and tremendous defensive work here by Sandy Bay. They're trying to hold play back as. There's another quick transition up the pool on this 25 metres. Very strenuous on the players as they're just taking their time now. Passing it off. Trying to get into a better play. Draw the foul. They've done so. Quick ball over, but uh, chipping in there was Franks. Did a great job on Hudson, who was just dropping back. Franks, one of the quicker swimmers here for the Crocs. Gets that ball back, and they decide to go back to the safety of uh, Simmons. Yeah, I think that's a major foul, it is. And there's a red card. And they've been uh, shown the door. As we can hear, an enthusiastic crowd. And I think that's Hobday who's uh, drawn that. It is. So a major foul there on uh, Hobday as he's been sent to the bench so that gives Sandy Bay a great opportunity 
coming towards with only a minute 23 to go. As uh, we can see now, just waiting for clarification. Just a bit of a discussion there with the referee. Just asking to take the cap off and as you can see down there in the sin bin and has to get out of the water and does so. So the ball comes back now to the centre of play and it's taken possession by Hunter Wright. Of course, one of the main playmakers you can see there trying to get some space. Here's a big chance. Again, try to draw that foul. Sandy Bay take possession of the ball. And it comes back out. You see trying to shimmy. Another shot. Good pass. That was very quick because they've got that one-man advantage now. They're just trying to use it. So a lot of pressure being applied here to the Crocs. They're going to have to really work extremely hard as it goes. Good defensive work there by uh, Simmons. Just got the fingertip to the ball. And uh, the Crocs breathe a sigh of relief that Sandy Bay didn't score on that uh, offensive thrust now. 28 seconds on the shot clock. And, uh, 21 seconds on the shot clock and 23 seconds on the game clock as the Crocs driving forward through Hay, who's uh, just making a comeback this uh, this, year's, uh, this year. He had the shoulder reconstruction and it's great to see him back out in the pool. He's a very big, strong young fellow and he's been doing some strong work there as a shot's come. Uh, optimistic shot there from uh, Hunter Wright, but if anyone was going to score, why not him with one second to go? He uh, had a shot from downtown. So everything's got to go their way. We saw the backhander, and there is first quarter, and uh, the first blood for the grand final has gone to Sandy Bay, and they're very, very enthusiastic crowd. Uh, is urging their players on as the uh, boys are going to go back in now and uh, have a spell as uh, we are going to cross for a break and hear a word from our sponsor and we'll be back at the Dune Aquatic Centre for the second quarter in just a few moments. Oh. So we are away in the uh, second quarter and great uh, swimming there by Sandy Bay Blue as they are again they are on fire they are two goals to the good and uh, not only that with the ejection out of the game of Alastair Hobday who of course got the red card and he is out of the game as that shot comes in and just mopping up is Julian Hudson opportunist goal has put that one through as we saw there the was a fantastic shot and that rebounded in and uh, like a cat just jumped on it and put it through for Sandy Bay's third goal. They are having a night out here and uh, certainly the Crocs have been so good throughout the season. We know they're going to come and come hard, but you'd like to see just uh, something from them in this second quarter. Very important they get themselves back in the game and drawing the foul there was Simmons. And it's a major foul. As we can see, the referee has signalled it. And coming out, it was a shot by Franks and parried by the goalkeeper there in Fisher as coming out of the game for that foul was Josh Wiley. So the Crocs now take the ball on the side as they try to get it in. It was a shot very ambitious from that angle and well covered there by Sutton for the Crocs in the goalkeeping position. Here's a big opportunity as going in. This is a foul, a major foul as Stevenson was going into goal and it's uh, Hunter Wright who will now come up and take possession of the ball and have a penalty shot on goal. This is uh, murmurings here at the Doon Kennedy Swim Centre, ladies and gentlemen. We are on for a very big game. 3-0 to Sandy Bay and a penalty shot to come. There is the shot. And the young Australian representative, Hunter Wright, has put that one through for his second and Sandy Bay's fourth. And uh, there is some daylight between the two teams 
at the minute. Crocs just trying to settle them down as uh, McMullen takes the ball out wide. They're trying to set up through the middle. The ball has come loose, 16, 15 seconds on the shot clock. clock. A bit of a Hail Mary there, trying to get in for one of the centre forwards to get on the end of it, but the defensive work by Sandy Bay is far too good as there's a quick break as they're trying to push hard here. It was uh, Wiley, but Franks was good enough to get back and cover that offensive shot. It's a goal there. Nice shot by the two Australian representatives. It was Franks passed it off to uh, McMullen. It was the blind turn and the very, very swift shot on the turn and has uh, put that through for the first goal for the Crocs. I wonder if that's the thing that can get them going as we are here in the second quarter. Four minutes, 20 to go. Sandy Bay now, as you can see, setting it up. Nice pass over to Hudson. Back again, so the Hudson boys teaming up well, but this particular occasion, it comes awry and the Crocs take possession as it's in the hands of Sutton. Sutton gets the pass out, back towards Franks. He's really working hard, trying to draw that foul, but it's an offensive foul that particular time. We could see there, Franks was really pushing hard, trying to get something moving for the Crocs. But lovely defence by Sandy Bay. That was nice play by Andrew Hudson. Tried the quick break. They probably need to just settle down here now. They've, they've got the ascendancy. Here goes Franks. This is normally bread and butter for him. As he's put that one through. I don't think that'll count, though. No goal. As we can see, the foul there. Just explaining over there. The uh, referees. Franks was highly disappointed. But the ball goes back to Sandy Bay Blue. Very dangerous on the break, and that's the sort of thing that they've done all season, the Crocs. As we can see here, the ball comes into the centre forward. A swivel there by Julian Hudson on the turn, and he has put that one through for the second, and this uh, second stanza has really opened up. It's a quick transition of water polo. It's, uh, the defence hasn't really got time to set up, and uh, just like in any sports, you name it, no one likes that quick transition in foot. Aussie rules, it's exactly the same. The defenders haven't got time to set up, and it's the same thing in water polo. If you can get that ball in quickly, it's very, very hard to defend. As we can see now, Crocs through a succession of passes. Frank Franks, here is the skipper. As Simmons took that shot, he's just hitting the post. Comes back out now, some very strong defending. Oh, look at that. The experienced Simmons with the backhander. That's a magnificent shot. And again, beautiful play. No fumbling there, and that's the difference between the, the tiers of water polo. Probably in the lower tiers, they might fumble a bit, but when you get to the uh, A grade, as you can see out here, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that was brilliant play by Simmons. So now it is Sandy Bay Blue 5, the Clarence Crocs 2. But it is a really interesting game as Franks was good defensive work. You can see him sprinting down now. He's got someone on as he passes it over towards McMullen and he knows a goal score. He's already got a couple, but this time he decides not to do the uh, bounce shot, go directly into the top of the net. And he was just a little bit wide, but the game is really starting to open up now. The Crocs are certainly back into it, but they trail Sandy Bay Blue, five goals to two. Again, the ball comes in to Julian Hudson, who's playing a cracker of a game in there in that centre forward position. As the foul, the major foul has been drawn and Nathaniel uh, Simmons is just leaving the pool. Very experienced campaigner. See, now they have the advantage, Sandy Bay, feigning to go the shot. Just passing it back now. 
Oh, that's a costly turnover. And on top of that ball in the water is uh, McMullen sprinting. He's got two opposition. He's uh, trying to take the ball. He almost appeals for the whistle. You can hear some of the crowd urging the referees to uh, blow it. But uh, on this particular occasion, it goes to right for Sandy Bay and he takes the free pass. Sandy Bay now getting it in. Three on to one and that was always going to end up to be a crop ball as Franks now starts to break. Taking the ball up nicely in towards uh, Cameron Sharp who has the shot on goal, young Fergus Cameron Sharp and he has put it through for a goal. That's his first shot on goal, the young fellow and he's put it through so it's starting to tighten up a little bit now here at the Dune Kennedy Aquatic Centre drawing towards 43 seconds to go and uh, it is five goals to four. Crocs coming back. They're working their way into that game. You uh, can never count a good team out. As Sandy Bay, through the agency of uh, Andrew Hudson, drew that foul as he goes on very, very quickly. Gets it over the top. In towards Hunter Wright, who didn't even take possession of it, and he's put it through for a goal. Terrific work by him. He's a very, very dangerous player. There's another whistle on play. They go further afield. That's Hay, gets the pass off towards Franks. He's trying to, to get around uh, Hudson. And it's another major foul as number seven, Julian Hudson, is coming out of the water. Seeing him coming to sidelines, but we're not waiting to that as the Crocs have to take advantage of that additional man as the shot by uh, McMullen was in haste and uh, he's gone over the top so didn't take advantage of that extra man play as the very very long shot comes in and that is half time ladies and gentlemen in what has been a cracker of a half here in the final of the Relevant Drug Testing Solutions Water Polo Grand Final for 2019. It is Sandy Bay Blue 6 to Clarence Crocs 4. We're going to take a break and we'll be back with the second half in just a few moments. So we are away in the third quarter of the 2019 Relevant Drug Testing Solutions Water Polo. Big final here at the Doon Kennedy Aquatic Centre in Hobart. It's been a fantastic season. It's great to see these young athletes go around and do their stuff, and it all culminates in what uh, has been so far very, very entertaining water polo, as uh, within the first 20 seconds of play, James Foster has unleashed a thunderbolt from a long way out and uh, put it through for a goal, much needed for the Crocs. That's the Phillip that could get them going in the second half. And uh, they are now back within one major of Sandy Bay, who have, uh, took the ascendancy early in the game uh, with the first three goals. There's a turnover. Hay was trying to force the issue, but uh, unfairly adjudged the referee. And the ball was going back towards Sandy Bay. Devine, who took the possession, got it into the ever-dangerous Julian Hudson, who has got uh, two goals prior to that shot, and that's his uh, third. So three goals to him, three goals to Wright, and one to Andrew Hudson. Sees Sandy Bay Blue, seven to Clarence Crocs, five. Ball back there to uh, Franks, offloads to Costello. Ball comes in, it's in dispute. Hay goes for it, but there's been a whistle on play. And uh, Fisher will take the pass. He tries to pass it out to Devine, who, seeing the threat from a long way, was Franks, comes the attack. And uh, it is very, very close checking here in the grand final. I think at halftime, uh, Simmons might have given the direction he wanted more from the defence. 
as uh, that one's come over the top. And uh, that is a major penalty to Joseph McMullen, the man who has scored for the Crocs. And coming up and taking that penalty will be Hunter Wright. Right now, taking his time. Brilliant elevation by the young fella. You can see him really kicking hard to get himself directly out of the water. Spirals up and then uh, very strong with that pendulum style. Big levers on him. He's a tall lad and he shot that one through for a goal. He's an absolute key player for Sandy Bay if they were wanting to take out the grand final. Nice play there by the Crocs. And I'm just waiting for clarification on what the referees say. They've got the hand up. I think that's going to be a foul. The ball might have been turned over. Now the shot will go here to McMullen. Oh, McMullen. Steady. Great nerves has put that one through for the Crocs. So uh, every time Sandy Bay looked like going away with it, the Crocs just find their way forward and steady the ship as they did that with the uh, ever-experienced McMullen, who I mentioned previously has uh, represented Australia in the uh, country division. Again, good defensive work there by Hay. Getting it in. And that's a good turnover. Well won there by Sandy Bay. As the Crocs come away with the ball. Franks getting up high. Thought for a minute he was going to have a long shot. They decide to set up inside the key. There's uh, McMullen on that poster. Just being kept out. As drawing the foul was a very experienced play by Fisher. Down to Barnett. Barnett on this particular occasion, he tries to settle down. It was two on one defensive work. As Julian Hudson drives in and uh, draws that foul. Sees Andrew Hudson on the break. That's a turnover towards the Crocs as Foster takes possession of the ball. Gets it out towards Cameron Sharp. Back in board towards Franks, who wasn't quite ready for the ball. He was on the downstroke of his uh, freestyle there. And Sandy Bay come up with the ball. Another quick transition of play. Looking back inside the pool. Nothing on, so they go back so they can offensively set up. Oh, that was ambitious, but I think it's drawn the foul. That's the way uh, the umpire has seen it, as you can see now as they signal towards the referee bench. And the penalty shot for a man who has been very steady so far on these very nerve-wracking moments. As Wright puts that one through for another goal. Gee whiz, he's been so steady, just calm, which belittles his years. He, he looks like such a seasoned campaigner, the young fella, who only just a few years ago as a young fella running, I, I used to see him run around in the STJ. I felt he's had a major growth spurt, and, and it certainly shows he's a very strong young man and uh, does a lot of laps in the pool to get that physique. And it's paying dividends now, as we can see. Simmons off to Franks. Franks driving forward. That's brilliant play by Franks, but stopped right on the line there by Fisher, who has been instrumental in really keeping them in the game. So now they go forward to Sandy Bay. They are really gaining in confidence. They are three goals up and have possession of the ball with 20 seconds left on the shot clock. Now towards right. 
good defence on him. They know that he's a key player. They've got to watch him as he gets up really high, tries to put that one into the top corner of the net, but it hits the post. Out it comes. Crops through Cameron Sharp. Flicks it back inside. There's McMullen. Over towards Hay. Hay directly in front of goal. Trying to get the angle. As the shot came in by Costello. That one was an easy one to defend. And Sandy Bay come away with the ball. 44 seconds left in the third quarter. So there's a couple of opportunities to score here as they're just taking their time The Sandy Bay. Trying to take every second off the so shot clock. Ten seconds to go. Nine seconds. It's a big yes! shot there yes! from Hunter Wright. That was a long way out. And the interesting thing, of course, in the water polo caper is once the ball hits the water, it actually skids and picks up an extra momentum. And uh, that was definitely the case there as Wright fired that thunderbolt in. And it is now Sandy Bay 10 to Clarence Crocs on six. Very, very close to three-quarter time. And Sandy Bay now have the ball with only four, four seconds to go. And it's in the hands of the man they want. It's a lob shot. And Hunter Wright has put that one through right on the siren. I think everyone's expectations, he was going to fire that one like a rifle as he has done throughout the day, but Wright was uh, very strategic and cleverly lobbed that one over the top, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, Sandy Bay Blue are uh, in a position they haven't found themselves in all season. Uh, they are leading in the grand final as it is three-quarter time, and uh, we'll be back with all the exciting last quarter highlights in just a few moments. Welcome back to, to the Doon Kennedy Aquatic Centre for what's uh, going to be an action-packed last quarter here in the relevant drug testing solutions water polo grand final. It is the Crocs who have been so good all through this season with everything to do in the grand final and uh, right from the outset, it has been a turnover and Sandy Bay are going to take possession as they're going hard towards the goals. They're fainting and trying to get a shot on goal, but uh, good defensive work. I think at this stage, it's uh, certainly going to be a foul. Uh, well played. It uh, comes out towards the main goal scorer there in Hunter Wright and it's a deflection and it's gone wide. So very exciting start. Not, of course, if you're a Crocs fan, they really do need this uh, first goal to just inject some bit of enthusiasm because at the moment it is Sandy Bay Blue 11, the Clarence Crocs 6. Been a fantastic game here tonight of very, very good, high quality water polo. Sandy Bay take their time. They really just need to not go into their shells here and try and just save this game. They need to do what they've been doing and win it. Uh, that can fall into a trap of the Crocs who we really, we know, pushing hard as uh, Simmons has drawn that foul. Simmons with the pass off towards Franks. Really close attention now. He's coming in. Big shot, but... Hunter Wright, uh, he's been not only fantastic in the offense, but you can see here, there, he, he got the extension up and got the block on and has done some fantastic work in the defensive area of his game uh, so far tonight. As that ball has gone very close, the umpire, uh, referee, sorry, had a close look at that one and deemed that it hadn't crossed the line, thankfully, if you're a Croc supporter. It is now, no, it comes in towards Franks, takes possession of the ball, and uh, Franks has put that one through. Well played there by Tom Franks. Has really 
breathed a lot of life into this game with uh, a little under four and a half minutes to go. The Crocs have clawed that one goal back. They are on to seven, where Sandy Bay Blue are sitting on 11 goals. Sandy Bay won't mind if the ball is out there, but this is what I spoke about a minute, just a few minutes ago, that uh, the Crocs will be very, very offensively minded here, and they'll be really pushing up hard and trying to get possession of the ball as Franks just swam over the top and was penalised as Wright takes it, as Hay also takes possession of the ball, gets it back towards Franks. Franks gets it out wider now. Yes. Trying to find a hard shot there from Cameron Sharp. But Fisher, he's had a great game tonight in the goals. Saved a couple of crucial shots, uh, especially early in that game and uh, in that second quarter. Foul has been drawn. Team ready for the pass. Comes in towards right. Hay comes over the top. And it is a lob shot there. Rather ad adventurous by Hunter Wright. He's already got one from that distance earlier in the game. There's a chance for the Crocs. Oh, that's a great save. Nine times out of ten, Nathaniel uh, Simmons would have put that one through. But it was just... Brilliant play by Harry Fisher to block that goal. When you see things happen like that, you you almost think it's just uh, it's your night. As now it is Sandy Bay taking their time with only a couple of seconds left on the clock. They decide to just throw it out wide and let the uh, clock tick down. It's almost uh, desperate stakes here for the Crocs. As, uh, time is the enemy now, and Franks will know that as he tries to push forward. Almost needs to have a, a quick shot or get it into a, a dangerous area. Draws the foul. As he gets up, gets it in again to Simmons, who flicked that one across the back. And it's really got the crowd up and about there. Very physical there. As Simmons tried to flick that ball back. Showing some good composure. <coughs> Sandy Bay Blue. Getting it down to their forward line. Just taking their time is divine. Time is the enemy. There's a foul is there on Hunter Wright. Wright goes the long shot from the wing position as the shot clock ticked down. It uh, just hit the post and went away somewhat harmlessly as the ball comes in and defending yet again brilliantly is Sandy Bay. There's two on one as they're going towards the goal. It's the best, best form of defence is to go on the attack and get goals as that one's just lobbed over the top. And uh, an opportunity for the Crocs to drive forward. They do so. Draw the foul. It was James Foster with an ambitious backhanded flick. It has just gone wide with one minute to go in this grand final. Sandy Bay just need to keep possession here for the next 22 seconds on the shot clock. I'm sure what they'll be hoping for. It is a shot, which gives that ball back with uh, 48 seconds to the Crocs. They are seven goals trailing Sandy Bay Blue, who are on 11. Simmons tries the long pass, just goes over the top. Defending well there was Hudson. 
Now he has a chance to score. Decides to go to the pass and leaves the player open as Costello has scored a much needed goal there for the Crocs. Twenty six seconds on the game clock. It is Sandy Bay Blue eleven to Clarence Crocs eight. Referees just insisting that the uh, cap be tied on correctly and it is all set to go. So Sandy Bay Blue just taking their time, getting that ball in. Could be an opportunity to have another shot, but well done by the keeper there. Nice play by Sutton. It's a shot from very, very deep and getting everything behind it as Fisher as he has done all night as Hunter Wright has a long, long shot right on the siren. And there is the proverbial cherry on top of the grand final cake here at the Dune Kennedy Swim Centre. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was a fantastic game of water polo. And uh, what was expected to be a close game was a tussle, but it has ended up with Sandy Bay coming out the victors here with uh, 12 goals to eight. If we uh, just check as we got looking down at poolside, uh, a very, very happy Sandy Bay team. They are absolutely cock a -hoot. Why wouldn't they be? Because they have uh, just pulled off a huge victory here at the Dune Kennedy Aquatic Centre. For them, Hunter Wright, the number two, Let's just have a look here. I need to take my shoes and socks off to count how many goals he's got. He's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight goals. Terrific individual performance by him. Uh, not only from the field position, but also from the, the penalty area. Andrew Hudson chimed in with one, and Julian Hudson with three as the players come together. And this is what it's all about. They go out there in water polo. They swim hard. They tackle hard. They push into each other. But at the end of the day, they understand it's a hard fought sport and great sportsmanship being shown by the uh, combatants as they, as they go on and, and shake hands. Uh, and, and just back for the goal scorers for the Clarence Crocs, it was uh, young Fergus Cameron Sharp who got uh, one, James Foster got another, Matthew Costello with that uh, late one, Tommy Franks got a couple, Joseph McMullen uh, got two, and the coach and captain of the Clarence Crocs, uh, Nathaniel Simmons, with one goal. So it has been an absolute cracker of a game, as we've just said. Uh, very, very high standard here at the uh, Doon Kennedy Swim Centre. We hope that you've enjoyed uh, the coverage as the players now will be going down to get their medals and much deserved for here, as you can see, on the presentation on the dais. So just calling out, it was Harry Fisher getting his first one. Hunter Wright, of course, the man who scored all those goes. Theo Ives has got that one. Andrew Hudson, who played a stellar game with a single goal. Josh Wiley comes forward to get him, uh, chimed in nicely. And uh, number seven, uh, Julian Hudson, much deserved. And uh, another stellar game from him with, with uh, three games. Jackson Devine, he goes forward to get his medal. He did a wonderful go one. Alex Contenenza, who's uh, doubled up. He's already played in the underage. A very good uh, junior footballer as, as well. Jack Stevenson, he goes forward to get his. He's an up and coming young player. Number 12 was uh, Mitchell Barnett, who uh, goes forward. And Scotty Wilson, uh, the number 13. Very uh, powerful player. And, uh, and of course, the coach, Dean Wright, goes forward to get his medal. So a uh, very, very good performance by him. He would be one very, very happy coach uh, on that victory. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think we're just about to uh, wrap it up here from the Duden Kennedy Swim Centre. It's been an absolute marvellous performance there by Sandy Bay Blue to defeat... 
uh, uh, what was before a team that haven't been defeated by this team, but anything can happen in the grand final, and that's what we saw when the pressure was on. So that's it for 2019. We hope you've enjoyed it here from Duff TV. We look forward to bringing you all the action in the 2020 season. So uh, it is Andrew Hopwood signing off here for Duff TV.